Okay, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you've listened to the podcast, you've heard us talk about our trucks. I'm gonna give you a walk around. We wanted to make some content here uh, that you can see, not only stuff that you can hear that you get on the podcast. Behind me, this is the truck from episode 59, the truck with the illegal engine. Uh, I swapped the driver out of this truck this week so I could get some repairs done on it because it uh, the heater don't work and it's December and uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, so I'm gonna put a heater core in this truck. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to today, uh, but I'll give you a walk around and that way you can kind of see a lot of the stuff that we've talked about on these trucks. So let's go back to the back here. So let's start with these tires. All of our trucks get Michelin Line X Energy D Super Singles. Um, this is the, generally the first upgrade that we'll do to a truck when we get it. These tires are the best uh, lowest resistance tires that you can get. And uh, so all of our trucks have these. We put these on as soon as we get them. Uh, this truck actually had duels on it. Um, and uh, we took the duels off, we put these on here. But this is the first and one of the most important upgrades that we do to a truck because of the fuel mileage savings. Now, you're probably, if you've never driven a truck with super singles, or even if you have, you're probably saying, well, I don't like super singles. They're not better than duels. Well, I can tell you that I've been driving these trucks for 22 years. These are the first trucks that I've driven with super singles, and I can tell no difference. I've been in ice, I've been in snow, I've been in rain, I've been on the dry. I can tell absolutely no difference between a set of duels and a set of super singles. Next up here, all of our trucks, with the exception of the one truck that has the DPF, all of our trucks get a Pittsburgh Power muffler. It's better flow, uh, helps us with our fuel mileage. This is, it's kind of hard to see, there we go. This is a fleet air filter. If you've seen a K&N filter like on your, some of your race cars, that's a $450 filter, but it's cleanable. And it, uh, it does a lot better job getting the air inside. You, it helps the turbos pull up faster. So when you combine the fleet air filter uh, with the Pittsburgh Power Muffler, the, mo the motor is able to breathe better. And that leads to uh, better fuel mileage. This right here, is the OPS oil bypass system. All of our trucks get these. Uh, this has been on all of our trucks. Uh, this has been on Larry's truck uh, just after he got it. And that truck now has 1.7 million miles. So as you can see here, uh, we have lines that, that bring the oil in and take it back out. Uh, this green filter is changed every 25,000 miles. The the head here has a heater built into it, so it's able to heat up the oil, and it has a vent that is able to remove contaminants by heating up the oil. And this is a five micron filter. Uh, we have a shutoff valve here just in case we'd ever have a problem. We need to shut off the oil supply. We can just turn that that off and uh, and be able to, to shut the, the OPS off. But it, it gets its power up here from the alternator. It's about $1,000 or so uh, to, to buy one with the install kit and all that kind of stuff. And soon those will be available on our website. Okay, so the Century Columbia, all of the air box and stuff uh, is in here. And so uh, when I go to attempt to change this heater core, it's right over in this area over here. So I've got to take these pieces of the dash off will actually come off pretty easy. And then around here to the other side, these right here are the hoses that go up. So they, we've got the valve shut off because it was leaking so much coolant and it was making the driver uncomfortable. So I've got to take the air box off to get back into there and take the hoses loose, take the pieces of the dash off and the heater core should come out pretty easy. Thread it all together. There's where the heater core connects to. So I should just be able to take the uh, hoses loose here and that'll come out. 
And unfortunately, where the motor was just put in, all of this, all these hoses are new. Okay, so taking the dasher part of these trucks is actually not all that difficult. So we're gonna start by pulling out the cup holder. Now, a lot of times, unfortunately, these things are already broken, uh, but it just clips in. <clears throat> this is also, these are always, always broken. So this has two screws that actually go right here um, if they're in, in, intact on your truck. So we've got a screw here. All right, so that comes off. Now there's a, supposed to be a screw right here, but this is broken, and this is just these freight liners. That's the way they are. So we'll take the fuse box out, and I'm going to take. Oh, it's got a Phillips in. It. I think I saw something go down into that thing, like a screw or something. Yeah. This all comes out as one piece. Pieces of the So here's the heater core. I've got it loose from the other side. It just does not want to come out of there easily. There it comes. Oh, bless their hearts, they didn't give us much room to work here. And there it is. So, now you can see I did damage here as I was pulling it out, but basically what happened, if you, if you don't know what a heater core is, this takes radiator fluid, coolant from the engine, and cycles it through into these tiny fins, and then the fan blows air across it. So the problem with this one is surprisingly, it's not all that dirty. I mean, you can see a little bit you know, of dirt in there, but just over time they deteriorate and corrode. And so this one started um, leaking coolant. And so at first the driver could smell it. And uh, then it started leaking uh, enough to where it almost shut the truck off. It had lost so much coolant. We can see through to the outside. So you can see all that residue that was left there from where it was bad. Then the evaporator is right here for the air conditioner. So it's right there. And I'm just gonna say for future reference, if you're gonna do one of these, I would do the other. If you're gonna have to take all this crap apart and you got a million mile truck, just go ahead and put an evaporator in it too. Cause this is a big job. Okay, so here's our new heater cord. Now that's a little bit different than the other one. Just a little bit of a design difference. But you know, everything should be about in the same place. So this is the aftermarket one. So I'm gonna start by gently and carefully guiding this thing back in here. These airlines did not make my life very easy. Or that sun in my eyes. Okay, 
and there it is now on the outside i noticed if you if you look back i, I took a screw out on the on the firewall i didn't really know what it did well there's a plastic clip out there that holds this in and so that's why it was a lot harder to get out so now i'll start putting this back together and put this cover on now this cover has a gasket and i'm going to try my best to preserve that gasket so that it doesn't lose airflow out of here but it's it's kind of it's kind of screwed but really it's just there to help seal things up. Wow, that thing's a lot easier to put back in than it was to take out. That's for sure. Outside this is the piece from all ago. I took this, so come around here, and it goes up in here and locks that heater core in.
right here should be another one of these clamps. Now this, remember, six months ago, this truck had a new engine put in it. How do we miss those clamps? Okay, so um, that completes putting a heater core in a Century Columbia, and I'm really surprised that, one, it really wasn't all that difficult. I used a uh, T25 Torx bit, a screwdriver, a pair of channel locks, a 5 16 quarter inch for the bands, a 14 millimeter, um, you know, I used a, a socket driver inside. I had a pair of cutters to cut some zip ties. Um, but, you know, it's been maybe an hour and a half, okay? So, you know, if I'd been paying a shop to do this, they probably would have charged at least two hours, um, you know, at 120 to $140 an hour. And I just did this here in the driveway in like an hour and a half. Um, so this wasn't a difficult job to do. Um, I would probably, you know, give it a, a one or a two on the difficulty scale. It's really not that hard to do. I think the heater core cost, uh, I think it was like 50 bucks. You know, it wasn't even that much. Um, I had actually bought that heater core when we did this engine, and I forgot to tell them to do it. Well, as you can imagine, with the engine out, they could have done that heater core in probably 15 minutes. I, but that's on me. I forgot to tell them. So this is our first video of our channel. We want to give you more content like this um, because we do a lot of work to these trucks. There's a lot of stuff that you can learn uh, from what we do and, and this channel will give us a chance to let you see what we're doing and not only, not just here. So make sure you subscribe and like, smash that like button. Uh, subscribe, we're gonna make more content for you. I'm the guy that shakes down these trucks. So when they come into the fleet, I'll be the one changing everything, uh, dealing with the shops, and I'll be able to walk you step by step and show you the things that pop up along the way um, and give you an opportunity to see this before you have to do it yourself. Like and subscribe. See you next time.